That's right. It's time for your Sports Bros Podcast. My name is Andy Karchner, a.k.a. Big Bro, coming at you from live from the Karchner Family Reunion 2016. You should feel very blessed that we took time out of our time where this is the first time we've been all like 85 of us together in about six years, but we're still doing this for all y'all. Yeah, and actually, this is our first time doing the podcast from the same location. Do you realize I that? I think, didn't we do it again oh, a couple years ago? Same I don't thing, think but so. either way, it, yeah, it's a rare occurrence. For this sure. is a momentous occasion. Um, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Sports Bros. Our online home is tornbysports.com. Tornbysports.com. You can also read our columns, our articles, all our thoughts, and um, make sure you, you interact with us on Twitter. Normally, this show is live, we stream it on YouTube, but. We're kind of out in the middle of nowhere right now. We're out um, on a tract of land that our grandparents own near um, the beach in Oregon. And so technology is a little bit limited, so we're recording this and we'll upload it later tonight. But we will be on Twitter, so uh, make sure you always follow us on Twitter and follow the conversations. Of course, lots of conversations going on right now. Our last three weeks, two or three weeks, have been nothing but BYU and Big 12, but that's kind of understandable. Yeah, I mean, it's it's... It's leading up to fall camp right here in like two days when they start on Friday, and so and then the news every single day is different on the Big Twelve. It's who's leading. It's you know now the, the networks are saying it. this and that. It's you, you don't know like every BYU. I think two days afterwards thought that it was like a shoe in they're in, and now I'm like I went from like ninety percent to I'm like like sixty percent that BYU is getting in. I'm also like. 50% that it even happens at all. At all. So it's been a crazy couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, I don't remember. It's SB Nation or something like a fan sided. I can't remember. Um, one of the TCU writers on, on fan sided reported that apparently their sources say that there's a chance this might not even happen. And that, you know, it's just kind of all these weird reports. The Statesman Journal, I think, was the big report this week that said that. Um, Fox and ESPN apparently are a little bit upset at the idea of expansion. That was yesterday, the day before, because the idea is their contract requires them to pay the Big 12 a bunch more money if they add teams. And they think, apparently, says whatever the Statesman Journal report says, apparently we don't want a diluted Big 12 and then have to pay a whole bunch of extra money for teams that they don't view as really increasing the value of the program. Right, because I guess Kansas and Iowa State uh, don't right. dilute the program, you know, or dilute the conference. So, yeah, I think, again, that's that's part of this roller coaster ride. Is BYU on top? Is it even happening? And we were talking last night around the campfire, which we live, uh, live broadcast on Periscope, by the way, and... We were just talking with her dad about it, and you know, I remember when the announcement came out. The Big Twelve very purposefully didn't say we're expanding. They said we're going to seek out yeah. proposals and kind of explore it, right? And I think that was the Big Twelve saying, like, we're going to do everything we can to not commit to it. And I, I always had a little bit of hesitancy that it was even going to happen at all. So I'm, I'm still kind of on the. On they the edge didn't there. commit. They definitely didn't commit. I think it's, it's almost like too much now. If they were to go come back now, I feel like they lose a ton of credibility as a conference. They have a ton of, they already have a ton of credibility that they're losing. But you know, through the whole process, I think since the beginning of of expansion they have been viewed as a lesser conference we saw four major programs leave in 2010 and that that i think really did a a, the damage to their reputation and since then i feel like they've been really sensitive about that they didn't get someone into the first year of the playoff oklahoma barely got in in the second year of the playoff and then lost and and everyone kind of talks about them being unstable because they only have 10 members and now all these other conferences they're the only conference without a conference network now and they they're not making quite as much money on their deals as some of the other program of the other conferences i feel like they just if they were to suddenly say no nope, never mind we're not we're not expanding I think that would make them look yeah. really, really weak. Well, part part of me at the same time, though, I was like, well, why should we trust these big brand uh, reporters? Because you know, within hours before the announcement, they were all there's a zero percent chance that it happens, and here we are two weeks later talking about who's the leader in the clubhouse. So it's like, yeah. and then so you know, there's all this talk on on Twitter, you know, hashtag sources. But the fact of the matter is, some of those not you know Dennis Dodds or um, you know ESPN reporters do have inside sources and whether they want to call it a source they know somebody inside or they know how it's going down so 
part of me is like, why do I have to trust mainstream media and what they're reporting? Because it may not be. Well, true. In, in all fairness to the Big Twelve, though, the ACC twenty four hours before that announcement did it strike their like deal. The last minute and and I think everybody yeah. knows that's the straw that broke the camel's back. So. Yeah, you know, Dennis Dodd, Brett McMurphy, all these big time ESPN and CBS sports guys. Like they were all like you said right before the announcement, they were saying, "Nope, they're, there's either not going to be an announcement, or all they're going to announce that we're just done with conference expansion altogether." And then, boom, everyone was shocked. Um, you know, Matt Brown on SB, he's he's a friend of the program, um, so it they were they don't have a whole lot of credibility on this. And I don't think anybody has any credibility on this, honestly. I think almost everybody who has sources, and I mean, we have some people that have talked to us that say they're kind of close to the administration, but we couldn't really confirm. And so, you know, we didn't even feel comfortable. And, you know, you'll remember we were one of the first to break the Kalani Sataki news. And so when we have a source, we like to actually, like, substantiate it and make yeah. sure it's, like, credible before we put our name on the line there. I just don't feel like everybody does that. They just go, oh, I got a friend who's a ball boy at Iowa State, <laughs> and he told me X, and everyone just goes all over the place. And, and we eat it up, right? The, the fans eat it up because we want news. Like, we want it right now. Yesterday was kind of the first day that everyone thought that maybe it might have been announced yesterday. It wasn't announced yesterday. And now kind of the big question is, when do you think it's going to happen? I yeah. mean, it's, you don't... You don't think it's going to happen before football season? I don't. I'm I'm the, I'm the uh, pessimistic one of the two of us. I think I think given the history of the Big Twelve, they're going to drag their feet. Um, I think they're going to take their time evaluating the the prospects here. So I, I think it's going to go to that October meeting. And I'm not going to lie. I'm I would not be shocked to see them say, after further consideration, we've decided this isn't the best option. Or they could. I right now, if I had to put money on it, the announcement would be. We're going to take some more time and research it. We need more. to get this right. Yeah. You know, because the, cause the top four choices aren't clearly obvious. Let's, let's hire another firm to put some <laughs> numbers together. Let's for spend us. more money to make us more money, right? I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's ridiculous. But, Aaron, I mean, Twitter's kind of been up and down. You saw a tweet earlier today. Um, what was it? it? Was it was it Jake Trotter on Twitter that. That was saying here. I'm gonna pull it up right now. That way we can. Sorry, we got we got. It's, it is a family reunion, and cousins are coming in and out of this room. So you are having the full experience yeah. at the Carter family reunion. It's, what was, it's that, what was that tweet culture. that you saw? Which one? The the prestigious. The, yeah. Yeah. So the AP put out their their rankings, right? And I think everybody on Twitter has seen this. The most prestigious programs in football history, and BYU came in at number 34. And to give reference, there was only four programs in the Big 12 higher than that, and that was Texas. Oklahoma, West Virginia, maybe even just been those three ahead of BYU in the current Big 12. And so that just kind of just, you know, they're worried about diluting the brand. BYU doesn't dilute anything. No, I mean. In any sport, really, let alone football. It's a stupid thing to say because with a with a conference like, like the Big 12 that is so top-heavy, I mean, Baylor and TCU have been pretty good the last couple of years, but in reality, it's Oklahoma and Texas and then everybody else. And even when Baylor and TCU are good, they don't draw that many eyeballs, and they don't really sell out their stadiums or anything. So you talk about diluting. What you're basically saying is if you're if we don't want to dilute the conference, we need to bring someone in of Oklahoma or Texas caliber. And those are like top ten in the nation programs. Right, USC, like, Notre yeah, Dame. Yeah, who are you going to yeah. bring in, right? Like you think Notre Dame's going to come? No. You think – Florida Ohio State, State or I mean, Florida State was kind of well, a well, but then they just struck the deal, the ACC, and so it's not right. going to happen. Yeah. And I think it's just kind of stupid to say dilute because if you mean dilute anything worse than Oklahoma and Texas, you're idiotic because that's way too high of a standard. When and every every conference is that way, right? You have well, Michigan you, and Ohio State, and then you've got yeah. you know Wisconsin, which is a good SEC program, is pretty. But I mean, but, okay, not SEC. Year, let, but, let's be honest, SEC is the god of football, right? Sure. So I mean, I think uh, I think I think it's a kind of a stupid argument. So. Well, anyhow, the the bottom line is is the Big Twelve. If they are going to remain viable, they have to expand. You can't stay at ten teams with really only two teams that are going to be really desirable. Every other team that they had that were desirable left. Missouri, Colorado wasn't even desirable, and they left. I mean, how bad do you have to be when Colorado doesn't want to stay in your conference, right? I mean, University of Colorado. Well, but in fairness, they thought that that. The Pac-12 was going to be more lucrative, and the Pac-12 is now kind of, it, money-wise, kind of where the Big 12 is. So I think that's what they thought they were going to get into, because they're that's why there's even the thought of Colorado coming back, because Whoa. they thought they were getting into something better, but they're not. What they 
thought was that the Big 12 was going to totally implode, which it almost did. I mean, the Big 12 had to make an emergency call and added West Virginia and TCU. And that was like scrambling jets to try to get those two teams together. And Colorado sees Missouri leave and Texas A&M leave and Nebraska leave. And they're like, I ain't staying on this sinking ship. I mean, and, and the Pac-12 was kind of being reactionary too, right? Like, who adds Colorado? Like, I mean, I get it. The Denver well, obviously, Marshall they're order. Utah's rivals, so that's why you had to That's do true. It. You had to bring in Utah's true rival, University of Colorado. <laughs> but, I mean, that's just – and, again, we're back to the Big 12 having this reputation, right? They have this reputation. They almost imploded. They're so indecisive. They barely got one team who lost into the playoffs. And it's just this feeling that if they can't get – a sense of long-term stability, Texas and Oklahoma are going to leave. I mean, they could go to any conference they want, any conference they want. It takes one text from, from one of those presidents to say, hey, are we in? You're in. We're done, and the Pat, and the Big 12 is done. If Texas and Oklahoma leave, the, the Big 12 is done. Yeah. <coughs> so so that, that, that begs the question that when you look at the grant of rights expiring in, what, 2025 or something uh, like that? The Big that, 12. The Big 12, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. The question you know that I've kind of been flirting with here is if let's say BYU gets in, they're only in for eight years or seven, depending on when what season, right? Does the Big Twelve blow up then? And so it's is possible. BYU in P five for a whopping five, six, seven, eight years, and then they're looking for a new home again? And if so, is that okay? Does BYU in those six, seven, eight yeah. years establish themselves, get enough revenue in to kind of make themselves viable for if you go to these you know, maybe four power conferences to a 16, 20 team lease. Does BYU establish themselves in that amount of You time? have to. So, yeah, it's a good point. If if the Big 12 were to, you know, implode at 2025 at the end of the grant of rights, at least then BYU has the P5 label, right? Right. I just don't see the – I mean, the Big East kind of had an explosion, and they kind of wrecked themselves in the old um, BCS era. But – if at least you have that label. And I feel like that's the only thing really BYU's lacked. I mean, they haven't had awesome seasons the last four or five seasons, but the only thing they've really lacked is the label. I mean, they, yeah. I guess, uh, let me, I will amend that too. They didn't have any BCS bowl games, right? Like Utah, BC, Boise State were kind of the major darlings. And then, you know, Hawaii and U, and, and Cincinnati or whatever, and UCF. UConn, and UConn. Even. Yeah. yeah, even UConn had a game, right? They have a few... Th- stars that aren't really, or feathers that aren't in their cap, but that label is really the thing that has kept them out of the club. So I think once they get the label, as things reshuffle, people feel less like, oh gosh, we're diluting our conference, because now BYU has both the prestige and the label, and I feel like they'd find a home, right? Like if the Big 12 imploded, BYU might be in better shape than like Iowa State. Assuming they get in this round. Yeah. Which I don't assume anymore. I really you can't. Don't. You really can't. You can't believe reports. The first, let alone the first reports. You know that yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday after. Those ones are completely useless now. But again, I think a lot of it comes down to when they're going to do it. I think reporting will get more accurate as you get closer because it, it's, it's hard to keep Not that stuff. Not like all the people that were reporting the day before the big announcement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, and I even said that. Everybody said right? it wasn't happening. I mean, like everybody said, if I had to guess. It's not going to happen. My sources are saying it's not going to happen. And it happened. So sources really mean nothing when you're talking about all this sort of thing. Right? But uh, so at this point, you saw a tweet right before we got on that said that that they're looking at four teams now? Well, again, sources, right? Sources. So t- take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, there's one that kind of that, that hinted at that four was where they were leaning. I, I can't remember specifically. But again, it's it's... Everybody's been talking that's a logical thing to do. And so the idea that the Big 12 is actually leaning towards a logical thing makes me a little... Yeah, you can't ever... Makes me just question the person's sources right away, you right? You can't ever assume that what the Big 12 is going to do is going to be logical. Greg Rubel, of course, you know, as we talk about BYU's um, uh, accolades, uh, Greg Rubel tweeted out today that BYU is one of only six schools with a Heisman, Outland, Doak Walker, and Davey O'Brien Award. The only other teams with all four of those awards are... Boston College, Iowa, Ohio State, Penn State, and Texas. That's insane. You don't have Alabama. You don't have USC. Florida. Florida State. Florida State. Notre Dame. Notre, you know, Notre I mean, Dame. I really, respect Notre Dame. Yeah, if you're talking about that AP top 100 programs ever and you just got rid of like five of the top seven right there and yeah. BYU's in that list, let's talk about diluting the brand. Again, eight out of the ten current Big 12 teams are diluting the brand right there. Yeah. Yeah. It, 
it's just a weird situation, and who knows? I mean, I, I wrote on, on, on Torn by Sports this week, well, on Saturday, that there are outside of these kind of um, quantifiable um, criteria are the kind of political and social issues that really could keep BYU out of the Big 12. Um, the first of, of those three were was a sexual assault issue, right, with the, with the women coming forward saying that they were afraid to to report sexual assault because they didn't want to be turned into the honor code office. Um, and that, of course, has direct correlations with the Big 12 because they're dealing with their own sexual assault. I know it's not exactly the same thing. Right, but, like, but they're sensitive to that whole yeah. realm of, of scandal, I guess, yeah. if you want to call it. And so that was the number one thing. And, I mean, that's a big deal. Like, these days, like, sexual assault and no means no and all those types of things, it's a big deal in the kind of public mind right now. And, and no one wants to be another target for, right. for that sort of thing. Number two was other social issues dealing with um, LGBT, lesbian, bi, gay, transsexual issues. We talk about right now, like, everything from gay marriage to transsexual bathrooms and everything like that. Like, this might not be a newsflash to anybody, but BYU is never going to let same-sex couples into their married dorm, into their married housing. They're never going to let transsexual students go into, you know, their choice of bathrooms or locker rooms or dorm rooms. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, you you can push for it all you want, but B, BYU and and again, more importantly, the church is not going to bend on those standards just for their increased exposure and increased right. revenue to their, to their athletic department. That they they stand for something different than any other university in the world really does and right. so that that's always been kind of from the from the perspective of the athletic department and in particular the football team that's what's always kind of been the easy excuse why not to include them into the pac-12 yeah you know and I, I we were talking about this last night that i think out of the top candidates you know four five six seven candidates byu has more excuses than any other program why to say no they right. have everything you just mentioned they have the honor code they're another religious institution sunday play. sunday play they have too many reasons why the conference could say this is the reason why yeah. but they also have more reasons why to include they so do. it's, it's, that, on both sides it's that scale of like okay well what outweighs the other right does the prestige of byu athletics academics um standards whatever History. does that outweigh the fact that you won't play on Sunday, the fact that you're a religious institution, the fact yeah. that you're not as much of a research thing. So I, I, I still think that if BYU doesn't make it in two or four, it's because BYU was the easiest to say no to, even though they're also the easiest to say yes to. Right, there's a lot of reasons you can give. Uh, I think it's, these are, those are sensitive issues, and you know, university presidents, they're very sensitive to those types of things, right? Like, they're very sensitive, and I can easily... Especially right now, like you said. Right now, yes, I have a really hot topic. I mean, and, and as I wrote in the article, these types of issues are already intersecting with sports, with the NBA boycotting North Carolina... WNBA. Because, right, because of the, the, the transgender, ba transgender bathroom law, and then um, Jason Collins just spoke at the Democratic National Convention as, kind of, as the first openly gay major sports athlete in the United States... Like, these types of issues are already coming in contact with sports, and BYU, for better or for worse, is known they're not going to they're not gonna lose their ground, right? They they're difficult to deal with, I mean. <laughs> yeah, they're hard to deal with. But, I mean, they, they got some good press sometimes, too, right? When you talk about the Brandon Davies suspension, mm -hmm. they got a lot of good press. Like, good for them for, you know, holding up to their integrity. They they expelled, essentially, Harvey Unga, their all-time rushing leader, for his senior year, Um so they've shown that they're willing to just put their foot down and say, sorry, like we're not going to bend. Unfortunately, these are issues that are a little bit different than just, hey, don't have sex with your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. When you talk about LGBT issues, it gets extremely sensitive, and, and it's really easy to start like bringing out the tolerance. Well, right? and, and it's also not so much an individual basis, right? Whereas, like you said, sex with your girlfriend or breaking the honor code is a very individual case. Yeah. Whereas, you know, LGBT, it, it reaches a group of people, a community, class. Yeah. Yeah, a class yeah. of people. And so, sure. it, it, it's it's just a whole new dynamic that wasn't there in 2010 in the no. original form of expansion. So, BYU's got that hurdle to go over and whether... I, I personally don't think it's too much of a hurdle. I think I like where they're at. I think I like their chances. But, again, it's just BYU fans have been burned so many times in the past. It's so easy to sit here and say, here's all the reasons you could say no to BYU and why, if it happens, I don't think a BYU fan will be surprised. I no, think they'll be more are. upset because the fact that those, those type of issues, whether it be... LGBT oh, Sunday play or whatever, it, it'll be it'll be an epic meltdown, especially if they take the likes of UConn and Memphis. Or exactly, something like that. exactly. So number three in the article was Texas politics. I think we covered this on last week's show, but 
um, Texas governor, Texas lieutenant governor, and president of the University of Texas all came out and endorsed Houston for inclusion of the Big 12, which of course doesn't necessarily kick out BYU, but it definitely lowers the chances. Right. Because if you, I think kind of since he seems to be the leader as far as just like, you know, the travel partner and they have decent success. And Again, very that. few reasons not to include Right, them. exactly. They have plenty of reasons to and not very many reasons to kick him out. And so if Houston's coming in to take that second spot, BYU fans got to really hope there's going to be four. Um, so, and we were talking about this a little bit last night when we were periscoping, but if, what chances do you give BYU if they, if, big, if the Big 12 expands to two? And what chances do you give BYU if the Big 12 expands to four? Four more teams. I, I think if they go to four, I'd put BYU's chances in the 75 plus, 75 to 100 percent. Because again, I think there's too many reasons to include them. I think if you go two, mm. I, I I put BYU's chances. I put them in the 40 to 60. I know that doesn't equal. 60. I know that doesn't go up to the 75 <laughs> I was talking about. But I think I think again because there there's too many reasons not to. And then with with the politicking going on with the travel partner and stuff. I think I put him in that, which is sad because two weeks ago when this all started, you and I were pretty much it was eighty percent. There's no reason you could ever. Chance. But this the roller coaster that this has gone is has really made me think it's. I think if they else. add two, it's a coin flip. You said forty sixty. I'd say fifty fifty. I mean, like I split the difference. It, it could, yeah, if we're on the same page there. And then I I give it I give it top seventy five. It's similar number. Just top seventy five percent. If they go to four, it should be higher than that. Should like be. in reality, if you're looking at quantifiable demonstrable you know, criteria for inclusion. As outlined by the Big 12. As outlined, yeah, as they at least say publicly it, it, that they sure, want. Sure, sure. Right? But, I mean, you talk about, this is crazy to me that BYU, if they entered into the Big 12, they would have the third largest stadium in the entire conference. Like, like but, that, that. but they're going to dilute the brand. So. Yeah, and they dilute the brand. Yeah. They would have the, I think that, I, we haven't looked this up, but I'm pretty sure it would be the largest basketball stadium in the conference. So, we have, we've gone over all these things a million times, but at the end of the day, it just makes a lot of sense if you're being objective. you got to get BYU in. But these are humans, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's so many subjective reasons to not let them in. And BYU is just that type of school, right? I mean, they're kind of polarizing. You like, yeah, love them or you hate them. Yep. How many people are like, yeah, I'm kind of ambivalent toward BYU. Yeah, you turn on a BYU-Houston uh, game, you're like, yeah, I'm going to root for BYU. I'm like the Blue Cougar. It's not that way. Yeah, you no like them or you don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Um, we're here every Tuesday night. We have the Sports Bros Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Sports Bros. Our online home is tornbysports.com. That's Aaron. I'm Andy. Any last words, Aaron? Go Mariners. Go Northwest. <laughs> yeah, go Kings. <laughs>